Barcodes are found on almost every product in the world. Today I want to figure out how this little laser is able to read a bunch of seemingly random lines. But to figure that out we need to start with how a barcode itself even works. A barcode is a code made up of a series of bars. Quite the fitting name, right? With the obvious out of the way, let's see what makes it a barcode. For this we're going to be sticking strictly to UPCA codes, which are managed by GS1, the international standard for UPC and AAN codes, which are the European variant. It gets a lot more complicated, but I'm not going to dive deeper here, so I'm going to explain this like I would to a 5 year old, a marginally smart 5 year old. UPCAs are typically made up of 12 digits, the first 6 to 10 of those denote the manufacturer, while the remaining indicate the product itself. These empty Haribo gummy bear bags are a great example as both barcodes start with 04223872, but the last four digits are different, showing that they are different products from the same manufacturer. The bags are empty because I have a problem. All barcodes start and end with two thin lines, these are called guard patterns, and they help the scanner know where the code starts and ends. There are also two of these lines in the middle of the code to further reduce the chance of read errors. Barcodes also include corresponding numbers below them in the event a scanner isn't available. So now we have a basic understanding of barcodes and how they work, but now we need to figure out how this laser scanner is able to make sense of these bars. I asked ChatGPT how one of these scanners worked and was quite confused. I wasn't sure why the bass search was going into the IR Cobra, and I wasn't able to figure out why the light search Lendipis. I guess AI isn't quite ready to take my job. This is a USB barcode scanner. It uses a sweeping laser to go back and forth across a barcode and measures the negative space between the bars of the code. Full disclosure, I have previously taken this scanner apart in order to forcibly remove the speaker. I could no longer handle the loud beeps which sounded more like electronic screams. The rubberized front sleeve holds the scanner together and can usually be pried off pretty easily. From there you'll find two or more plastic snaps that hold the top shell to the main housing. Well there it is, in all its simplistic glory. There are a few components spread out among the top board, two of which are mirrors. One of these mirrors is on a spring-loaded axle, and when the scanner is connected, the mirror constantly oscillates back and forth. The stationary mirror is also really interesting. Not only is it a concave surface, but it has a tiny wedge protruding from the center of it. When the laser emitter is active, it bounces from the concave mirror onto the oscillating one, thus spreading the beam left and right in a rapid sweeping motion. In order to show the laser's path better, I hooked up a small fog emitter nearby release a puff of it, and sent the laser out. You can see that it bounces off the wedge in the concave mirror at a nearly perfect right angle. I'll get to how it uses this in a moment, but first I am completely captivated by the oscillating mirror. There is no motor attached to this axle, it is completely silent, and yet it is rapidly dancing back and forth. How is this possible? Clever engineering is the answer. The back of the mirror mechanism has thin metal strips, and this inductor that sits behind the mirror creates a magnetic field in a twirl pattern. As soon as the field pushes the metal away, it starts to pull it back from the other side, leading to a rapid back and forth motion. The part that actually sees or interprets the breaks in the bars is this little module. When the laser passes over a barcode, the image is reflected back to the concave mirror and into this rectangular sensor. The sensor detects the change in brightness of the laser and translates that pattern into usable code. That code is then sent to the computer which understands it as a keyboard input. Essentially the barcode scanner types the code it scanned into the computer for you very quickly. But there are still two parts that are unaccounted for. This pair of what look like LEDs are actually an infrared emitter and an infrared receiver. To the naked eye they look almost identical. But what if I slip this R72 filter on my camera? This filter blocks over 95% of visible light below 740 nanometers in wavelength, leaving only the furthest edges of red and infrared light able to hit my sensor. With this filter it's easy to see that the diode on the right is emitting infrared light, while the one on the left isn't, meaning it's the receiver. This doesn't actually do anything as far as scanning a barcode, but it does act as a motion sensor. When the receiver sees a change in the emitter's brightness, it assumes a barcode is being held in front of it and engages the laser. It's a pretty neat way of making the scanner hands-free for the user. 
With all that said, that's barcode scanners in a nutshell, at least the oscillating laser kind. There are many variations of scanners out there like the omnidirectional ones that you've likely used at your local grocery store, or the 2D scanners that can read QR codes, but those are for another video. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the inside of more everyday items, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.